What's going on? Move the Mouse here back in City Skylines with another episode of the How To series. And in this one, I thought we could start looking at uh, planning out a more efficient industrial area. This is really just kind of a sloppy grid that we zoned off to kind of meet that demand when our map initially started up. But now that we have train access, there's a couple different things we can do to make a much more efficient uh, industry area. Now, whether or not you have the Industries DLC, there are some specializations you can do, and we talked about these a little bit before. But anytime you paint a district, you can go into Industry Specializations and basically stamp it with Forestry, Agriculture, Ore, or Oil. And if you don't do anything or if you want to reset it back to Generic Industry, that's the last option here. But that just basically means that any of the uh, buildings that pop up in here um, are going to adhere to that certain standard, but it's still kind of just going to auto grow those buildings um, Just based on the zoning and the type of specialization that you define on it But the other thing you can do if you have the industries DLC Is if we go over to here to this tab we can actually paint an industry area and Right away that throws us into the views so we can see that you know, there's farming here in yellow forestry and green and and obviously the thicker the trees the better the uh, the forestry area will be and this is up here what we've set as uh, kind of that auto specialization so we've defined it as forestry and it's just going to grow that way if we wanted to though we could paint an industry area to define it as something basically works very much like a district we're just painting an area a logical area of the map that we want to be an industry and then depending on what type of building we drop in, that defines the industry type. So same as before with the specializations, forestry, farming, ore, and oil. In this case though, you don't necessarily have to zone anything because you're gonna choose what buildings to place down. And the more goods you produce and the more workers you have in an area, you can unlock uh, bigger and better buildings which basically manage the entire production chain from pulling a resource off the map. Now farming and forestry are both renewable, ore and oil are not, so you'll eventually drain those resources unless you're playing with the unlimited ore and oil cheat turned on. You also have options for warehouses where you can store goods, and then eventually you'll unlock unique factories which take multiple types of resources from different industries to assemble them into products which can be exported off map for a profit. So here, Furniture Factory uses paper and timber, both pulled from forestry. A bakery uses assets from farming, so crops, flour, and animal products. And then as you get further and further down the chain, some of these get more and more complicated. So something like a soft paper factory is gonna use paper, plastic, petroleum, and crops. So you would need forestry, oil, and farming in order to make the goods that are necessary for a soft paper factory. Now, if you don't have what you need on map, let's take a look at our resources here. So we have zero oil on our map. If you did want to do an oil industry, you could do that. Uh, but what you'd have to do is plop down a road, connect it to the highway, and then you could do an oil main building like so and that unlocks a couple things that unlocks a, a pump which you would pull oil from the ground but since that's not an option on our map you do have these storage buildings that you can drop down and when you put those in you can actually interact with those and say for example i want to fill this facility and it will do that with goods from off map so that'll come in via train or via truck into the area and that will fill up on oil and then you can use that to produce actual goods. But in this case, let's just do generic industry. I just wanted to cover some of those basics of industries DLC. If you wanna see a more detailed guide on that um, or more specifically a Let's Play, my season six that's going on right now um, kind of goes through everything that you might wanna know step by step, episode by episode as I build an entire town around all the new industries. Uh, but I will do a um, DLC focused how to's pretty soon but for right now, I just want to talk about making a more efficient industry than what we have over here. 
Now, in order to do that, we need a couple different things and highway and rail are both fantastic starts. So let's find a spot to cram it in. And I'm thinking right over here by the river, not too, too close that it's going to pollute because regular industry is very high polluting, unfortunately. But what I want to do is let's first of all, pause the game. I'm going to break a bit of this rail system here and we're going to reassemble this. We're going to do kind of an expensive upgrade here. So you want to have a little bit of money in the bank if you're going to do something like this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to delete a good section of the highway here so we can drop an intersection in. And I'm going to start with the T intersection. We're going to make some changes to this. So let's see how that looks. Kind of line that up just a little bit different. I think that can work. And then let's hook this in a little different. So I always like to delete a little extra space on either side. It kind of helps hook these in better with less, uh, less awkward bends. So we'll go back into roads. We'll go over to highway. And in this case, I'm just going to use the default three lane highway that everyone has access to. If you have mass transit, you have some other options in the form of two lane highways, four lane highways, two way, one way each highways. Um, so, so there's a lot of different options, but to just blend in with the, the highways that are on map, I'm going to use the three lane highway. I'm going to switch to the curve tool. And actually, I think it's going to be easier to come from over here. So it will actually light up this little arrow when you're kind of on path to intersect with that other road. So if we click to anchor our point here, you get a pretty smooth transition. Not too bad. I'll do the same thing here. We'll reverse those directions after the fact, but let's finish over here. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing. Kind of hook it in like that, trying to keep them relatively parallel. And now we can go into our reverse direction tool and fix those highways that we kind of made backwards here. Okay, so we've got a highway interchange. I'm gonna connect this a little bit uh, further out just so we have some straight shot of highway coming off of here because I'm actually gonna delete some of this. This one make sure they're nice and parallel. So I'm going to delete those two segments, but we've got a way to kind of hook it back up exactly where it was. What I want to do is, and this is just purely an aesthetic thing, but I like to show that there are options. If we want this train track to come over the highway, we could do that by just simply going to trains, going to the tracks, and then when we get to the roads, we can go up and over and then back down. So that's kind of the quick sloppy way to do it. The other way we can do it is by kind of carving a little valley here for us. So if we go into the landscaping tools and I'm just going to lower the train just a little bit here. That should be plenty. And then I'm going to level the terrain based on that point right, right there. I'm going to switch to a small brush and I'm just going to make a little valley through here. And we can smooth this out afterwards. I'm going to go out further than I need on both sides. And then let's get the train tracks through there first. Just 
It's going to try and go right up the middle of the valley here. And now we can connect this highway back up. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll smooth this out. It will kind of, uh, it'll kind of stick where the, the train tracks are, as you can see it softens the terrain up a little bit. And now we should be able to connect those highways back up. Okay, and if it doesn't let you do that, what you can do is raise it. If I go to my snapping options, you can actually choose how much those elevation steps are. So how little do we want to go up every time we click the button? If we go to the shortest option here. We can make that a little less drastic. And you can see we can just barely get over the, the highway there or the, the train track rather. So it's just enough room to get some trains under there. And we'll do the same thing. We'll come up one click. If you want to look from this side, you want to keep your pillars nice and even, you can actually kind of snap them to the same point. So right there, those pillars should be even. We come over and then we connect it. Wow, that actually looks like that's, uh, looks like that's eating the train there. It's like I came up higher on the other side. Maybe I did two clicks? On the shorter uh, on the shorter distance, yeah, I did. It's a little tight, but if it lets you place it technically, then a train could get under there. But this is just one way you can make things a little bit more realistic. If uh, if you drive around your town, you'll probably notice that um, a lot of highways are like this. So you'll have just a little bit of a cutout where the highway dips ever so slightly. You may not even notice it if you're just paying attention to the highway, but if you look at the, the sides of the road. Um, often there's a little, tiny little valley or a tiny little mounding where a cross street that's crossing the highway goes up and over and you have these little cutouts where those bridges are. It doesn't drastically change the height of the overall, in this case, train track or highway, um, but it's a little bit more realistic in terms of uh, build. So we've got a tr so we've got a train and a highway handy here. So let's fix our directions again. And now we want to start laying down some roads for the actual industry area. But in this case, we wanted good access to highway and rail. And I think we've got both those things right here. So we've got this highway coming off. Now, for industry areas, I like to use a lot of one way roads for this workflow that that I tend to do, um, but just to show you how things can get a little bit more efficient at moving traffic through the zones, so you've got a lot of trucks coming and going. You want to keep the traffic flow as smooth as possible in that area, and one ways are a great way to do that. Now, with just the base game, you do have two lane, one way road, and that is perfectly fine. It's forty dollars per cell, and it accomplishes what we want. If you have the Industries DLC. You also have a small industry road, which is the same thing. It's two lanes, one way traffic, $30 per cell. It is cheaper. It's also noisier though. It generates more noise pollution. So that is something to keep in mind that it's a noisier road, but that's totally fine for what we're doing here. So we're going to have traffic coming from the highway here, and we want to kind of dump it into this zone. So let's do this. We'll uh, switch to our straight tool. And I'm just going to come down 10 units. We're going to change this piece right here in a minute. But I kind of want to lay the foundation for my grid work here. So for this, I'm going to come out four. And then I'm going to make these really, really tight blocks. So we're just going to zone everything we can. And the flow here is really important. So we've got everybody coming into the zone this way. And then what I'm going to do here is just continue this one way down this way. And then back up over here. And again here and all the way down here. We can go right up on top of the train tracks. The industries are not going to mind the noise. 
and then I have these coming back up. So I'm just going to delete those last two segments there because what I want to do is force the traffic on the highway into this zone. I'm going to do that with a two lane highway. So they're basically going to merge down to two lanes to then become two lanes down here. So we've got this traffic coming into the zone. Now we want to give the traffic away out of the zone. Uh, I'm going to freeform this so I can kind of S bend it back into itself like so. Now, I guess the other thing you could do is if you do have the industry roads, you have two lanes coming off the highway. You could force them down to two lanes here. This would be totally fine and it would save you a tiny little bit of money on the initial creation of the roads. I think not a lot, but. So we're bringing traffic in, you're filtering one way through, and then you're leaving the zone. Now, there are times when you may need to make a return trip into the zone when a business needs to deliver to another business or for our service vehicles to come back through. So I'm going to do a little exit ramp. If I'm leaving to export goods, I can go that way. If I'm coming back into the zone, I can go that way. Now, at the very least, we're going to want to have fire coverage at an absolute minimum. And we can do that right here on this block. We can kind of use this as a service block. And then I'm going to do the same thing with a small police station right next door. And they're going to need garbage service, too. So here I will throw a recycle plant. They're not going to mind the pollution because the industries themselves are going to be polluting quite a bit. Hopefully not too close to our water. I will have to keep an eye on that. I may have built this a little bit too close so keep that in mind that uh, it will pollute the ground and if the ground has water that could get in your water supply that is flowing downstream towards our pumps so we will have to keep an eye on that and you can see pollution on the info views and make sure that the kind of dark pollution bubbles like this aren't stretching into the water like this one is very close right over here so this might be a little bit close over here. But again, we can keep an eye on it and we could always use the landscaping tool to buy us a little bit of extra terrain over here. Just so the water's a little bit further out and we can pollute the ground without affecting the water. So that should be fine. And we aren't really diverting the river too much. You can see it bulging up a little bit there. But that will settle down pretty fast. We throw it on three times speed. There you go. So we've raised our uh, land there, and now we don't have to worry about pollution. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's zone it as standard industry. Have some businesses start to move in, and then we can power and water and figure out the rest of this. Now I'll show you where we don't want to zone. You may not want to zone. Well, I guess you know what we can here. So zoning all this area is fine, but we might not want to zone over here and I will show you why. Let's rethink our train line here. We want to get this all connected the same way. But we've got to make a little bit of room to hook in our cargo train here. So I'll do it right there. So we've got some room here and I want to bring this track out on this side. So we've got the station connected for trains coming this way. 
but those are only trains from inside the city right now. So we need to connect from outside. So this is a little less than ideal, but we can make it work by connecting like that. Trains are going to have to slow down quite a bit to come in here, but this is long enough that a train could come in and when we eventually hook up the other side, we can send it to other cargo stations around the map. And then that can actually help us deliver goods into commercial areas. So rather than the truck driving from here all the way out to our commercial zones to deliver goods to sell, we could actually have a, a train station up here that does cargo. And then the trucks will pick it up from there and deliver it into the commercial zone. So that can reduce some of your road traffic, which is nice. This also gives you the ability to import, export, and it provides uh, usually a level uh, up for the buildings that are here because it raises that land value specifically for industry capabilities. Um, it's okay, I've been ignoring the actual problems down here because we didn't fully hook this up into our grid yet. So we need to get water coverage and power over here. Sloppy pipes, but that's fine for our example here. If we look at power, there's a couple things we could do. We've got good wind and water uh, turbine power over here. So we could do something like that, but these generally eat up a lot of electricity, the, uh, the industry areas. So let's just actually hook it into our grid. We can come right across the water with it. So we'll do that and then we'll try and hook it in right over here. I think that will, that tiny little overlap should spread to the zone and it did. Let's go back, double check our zoning because I think I broke a few pieces over here when I was moving stuff in. So let's let this build up real quick. We'll time lapse this. Hopefully we have enough demand to fill the zone, but I want you to see kind of what this looks like once we have uh, all the industry traffic in there. The flow of traffic, again, keeping things constantly moving and having one-way intersections means that we don't need any stop signs or stoplights. So there's nothing here that's going to slow down traffic other than a truck pulling into a business. Now we've got the emergency service vehicles here at the beginning of the entranceway so that they can drive through the zone, go where they need to go, and then they can report back home by taking that exit ramp and just looping back through. And it's the same way for trucks. Trucks are gonna come into this area to deliver goods. They'll follow that same route, or maybe they are picking up goods to bring to commercial or to export off map via the train station. And again, we've hooked this up over here so that we can eventually have another cargo station up network but keep in mind that this particular train network, this isn't actually hooked up to an outside line over here. So if you're gonna only hook it up one way, it's more important to have that hookup going back into your routes that go to the outside world. Now, if you'd really plan the space out better, you don't have to do these kind of sharp turns like this, but the principles are exactly the same, regardless of how much space you really give it. The only really important thing is making sure that these have uh, enough space in the triangles for an entire length of train to slip by and that way you don't get this infinite gridlock. So we've actually got a train coming into our cargo station and that should spawn trucks to then, yep, there we go, to then deliver those goods. Let's see where they go. I'm guessing they're going to come into our zone. So they might take that highway all the way around up to there to come into here because we don't have that actually connected anywhere just yet. But that is a viable route. Now right now people are complaining that there's not enough workers over here. So two ways we can solve that problem are carrying a road network over here. I guess there's a few ways. We could bring a road network over here. 
we could put a passenger train uh, station over here and we could of course hook up metros. So let's do a quick metro line just to hook this area in. It's a nice, quick, easy way to do it. So let's bring them maybe to here, this corner. That way they can walk easily enough throughout most of the zone. And I'm going to curve this out and just get it connected into our other metro line here. Now, it's tough to tell, but you have the same issue with train tracks as you do with metro tracks. So if we look over here at our triangle intersection, when you have a, a corner like this, I can't come this way and turn left. I can only kind of go with the flow of the curve. So in this case with the metro line, this one can only go up this way, it can't turn left. So if we do a line here, we can connect this station, which is actually right next to um, our passenger network. Want to make sure we're creating a new line. Come down to here. You can see the curve that the, the train's going to hit there with that line. And uh, just keep an eye out for that. It'll tell you if you're not able to make a bend that you thought you were going to be able to make. But now people can get to this metro station on foot or from another metro station anywhere in the city, and then they'll jump lines and come down here to work. That should help our worker problem relatively fast. But we'll let this zone keep filling out for a minute, and again, just so I can show you kind of the traffic flow. Now, I've built much, much larger uh, versions of this, but it's a really effective way to do things, because again, none of the traffic is, is really stopping for other traffic. So I'll leave this playing on three times speed for a minute. Let me go into... Uh, the cinematic mode so that there's no UI and you can just see that you know as the trucks get heavier and heavier and there's more and more traffic coming through here it's still able to turn pretty well uh, one problem I do see happening here is that they think this is a good way to get to the the train station from here so they are turning kind of left and immediately straight and maybe slowing down traffic over here but when I build a larger version of this my uh, cargo train wouldn't be right here on the edge of this street, I would put it somewhere further up before this turnaround. And that way, if people are picking up goods, need to come back into the zone to deliver to another business, they can take that same loop around that we use for things like the emergency service vehicles. So it's the principles that are important here. So you can scale this up much, much larger if you want to. In fact, I'll try and find a shot of, of one of the, the zones that I did in another city. But you can scale this up. And as long as you keep with those same ideas, uh, one ways, have that loop around, have the train area off to itself. You can make a really efficient industry area. Now this is for default industry, but there's no reason that you couldn't do this with either the specializations or if you have the industries DLC, any of those industry areas as well. If you did enjoy this video, likes, comments, and shares all really help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. But until the next one, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.